Today's topic is Jamaican independence. Did Jamaica really become independent? No. And what did we get in independence apart from a flag and an anthem? Not a fucking thing. So in 1692, when colonial government was set up, just remember this, they took over in 1665 and named the island Jamaica in 1691. Anyways, the government consisted of a governor, executive council, magistrates court, and the court of admiralty. These courts are what we call today as maritime courts, meaning they have nothing to do with law or common law. The governor was also known as the Lord of the Land and he was also the commander for the Jamaican militia. The Jamaican militia today is what we know as JDF, the army. The army was and still being used as their personal bodyguards. Now you might say I'm wrong, but ask yourself this. When has a Jamaican soldier ever been deployed to fight a war against another country? Never. All they do is fight Jamaican people by keeping us in order. That's why I call it a personal army. Go to part two. Welcome back. By 1962, the black population became the superior majority, meaning that there was more black Africans more than any other racial group within the Caribbean at that time. So they know they couldn't continue with the same systems they had oppressing black people. So to appease black citizens and white colonists, the Crown decided to hand over some responsibility to the desegregated local parliament, basically letting some Negroes in. And that's all we got. Don't believe me? This is what the Independence Act of 1962 did not do for us, because I read the act. It did not relinquish the Queen's claim and dominion over the island. She still owns it. It did not return ownership and resources of the land back to the people. We don't own them. It did not restore indigenous rights or birth rights. Inheritance. It did not recompensate the wealth that was stolen from the natives during slavery for over 400 years. It did not remove the Queen as head of state. She is still very much there. Remember the time when the government said that they want to remove the Queen and make Jamaica a republic? Find out in part three. Hello. Like I was saying, the government does not have the authority to remove the queen as head of state because they work for her. The queen owns the island, so the governments are her employees. How can you take something legally from someone who already owns it? So don't believe all that shit. They only do it to get elected. Anyways, it did not rescind the governor general as lord of the land. He still is. Also, he is still the commanding chief of the military. Like, you remember that time when Bruce Golding wanted to send army into Tivoli? He had to ask for permission and the governor has to issue a state of emergency in order for the army to go in. But I'm lying, the government doesn't own the army. The army is still the Jamaican militia and is there for the chief governor to control. Anyways, it did not revoke the birth certificate bonds on the citizenry. We still bonded. I'll make a separate video about that. And it did not resolve the debts that was occurred upon the people. This so-called independent nation started off flat, broke, no money, debt, broke. Go to part three. So like I said, Jamaica started out flat, broke. And because of this, the government of Jamaica and the Bank of Jamaica, which is owned by the Queen as well, this is in the Bank of Jamaica Act 1960, soon started to borrow large sums of money from predatory multinational lenders like the International Monetary Fund, you lot know as the IMF, the World Bank, and the Inter-American Development Bank, the IDB. Those banks carry high interest rates and harsh penalty fees, one of them being known as the Structural Adjustment Policy. Keep that in mind. Here is an example of a structural adjustment policy. Jamaica has 3 million people currently living on the island, but only six post-service general hospitals. Portmore is the most popular parish on the island and they still don't have a hospital. You know why they don't have a hospital? Because of the structural adjustment policies. Because of this policy, when the IMF lends you money, they can tell you what they want you to spend it on. And they told us explicitly that we can't build no new schools or hospitals. Part five. Welcome to part five. This is part of the reason why Jamaica has not built a new school in over 20 years and a hospital in over 30 years. And the debt is why, which is the grip of poverty in Jamaica. Another negative impact that these policies have on Jamaica is to force the country to sell out its resources. We don't own the bauxite, nor the tourism, nor the airlines, or the airports, agriculture, utilities, or the highways. The 6th of this month will be 58 years since our independence and these policies are still running our country. They dictate everything from the value of the dollar to the rate of income tax to what schools they open or what roads get fixed. Today, every half of a dollar that you pay in tax goes towards serving that debt. The other half goes to royalties and other bondholders. Bottom line, your tax doesn't finance Jamaica. The end result is a bankrupt country with a useless currency and a population working to serve a debt that we did not accumulate. And finally, take yourselves over to part six. Hi, welcome to part six. There is a group in Washington, DC called the Center Course Product for Economy. They published a report in 2015 
And in that report, they declared that Jamaica was the most indebted country in the world. That means that of all 198 countries on earth, we're the only ones who owe so much money relative to the size of our economy. Like our debt exceeds the country's GDP. Meaning that the debt cannot possibly be repaid because you weren't meant to repay it. You were only meant to have a group of people working to service the debt, not to pay it off. Meaning that Europe still has their fingers, toenails, earlobes, eyelashes, everything in that cute little country we call Jamaica. So please know this, I don't make these videos to offend anyone. I make them to educate and to let people understand that as black people, child, we still struggling, even in our own country. Thank you for watching. <laughs>